My name is Khalif Ramir Sellers. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I've been dancing since I was three years old, according to my mom. I teach dance for a living. Hip hop, house, been doing it professionally since 1989. I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Rosie Perez. She invited me and my friends to come and audition at, uh, for this uh, Diana Ross video. And that basically changed my life. Got me into the industry. I went from a person that was sitting at home watching people on TV to becoming one of those people on TV. I ended up touring, working with various artists such as Crystal Waters, CeCe Peniston, Mariah Carey, Will Smith, Heavy D and the Boys. I work with a lot of artists that some of them I can't remember. I think I've done about 30 music videos and I've done a couple of movies as well. I travel the world teaching and sharing the love of this dance with. The youth, <laughs> it's a part of my life experience. That's what I grew up doing. I, I love music, period. A lot of people around the world, they know me for dancing to house. A lot of the hip hop clubs, they were very violent. Most of the club owners couldn't afford to keep these clubs open. A lot of people were losing their lives, so the insurance went up. Eventually they had to close the club. You had these young people cutting, slashing each other, robbing, shooting inside of the establishment. When those clubs closed, we were kind of like forced to find another place to party. And that's how a lot of us found house. Since I'm tall, I was able to act like I was older. I was able to go to clubs like Bentley's, and this was for an older crowd, 25 and older. Some of the bouncers knew that I wasn't old enough, but they still let me in because I dressed the part. I'm not sure, too sure about you, but just don't drink. I would go and dance, and then they would allow me to come back. This is the way I got exposed to that environment, finding out that there was another way that you can go party and you didn't have to worry about looking over your shoulder. The East Coast artists, they came here, they shared Run DMC, LL Cool J, Kumo D, all of the artists that were big in the beginning, Sugar Hill Gang. When these people came out here, they affected people in a certain way, and then also it spawned rappers on the West Coast, such as Ice T, then leads you all the way up to Snoop and all the new current artists like Kendrick. The music is, is really what that that's the relationship and then from the music the dance that goes along with whatever song is coming out because every song that comes out of a hit record has a certain dance that goes along with that music soul train was very important in regard to like putting these artists on tv as well as your mtv raps kind of help bring the united states a bit closer so we can understand what's going on with the west and vice versa the only similarity that I see is that we all love the music, but we move a lot different from one another. I think it has to do with the vibration you grow up in. New York's vibration is very high. It's a very stressful place. I feel the West Coast is a bit more laid back. They're not going to feel the music the same exact way we're feeling it, but we're still feeling it. If we see a certain movement, we'll gravitate to it because we can understand we're speaking the language when we move. That language is what connects us. For me, it doesn't have to be the same. You know, as long as we understand the language itself, you know. For me, it's just great to work in, this, in, the, in the States. Majority of my work is in Europe, Russia, Asia, South America, Canada. The U.S. is like lagging behind. There's a lot of talented people here and there's a lot of people that we want to share this with. We want them to know about this because everywhere else this is huge and they pay top dollar to learn this. When they said that they were doing it here, I was on it. I was honored to have the opportunity to come and to share with people from my homeland. The U.S. will always be in the forefront because this is where all the dance styles were created. The West Coast for the popping and locking. The East Coast for breaking and hip hop and house. We've set the trends from the beginning. We set the trends all the way up to this present day. Well, they look to the U.S. for what's in vogue, what's, what's next. They look to the U.S. for style, for the approach, to understand the culture better, so that whatever they're teaching and whatever they're doing, that can help teach their students because they have a better understanding of the place where it comes from, from the essence. So when they learn from the source, they're able to give a better understanding to their students, which will then help their students grow. Hip hop to me is a way of life. It's the way I walk, it's the way I talk, it's the way, it's everything. I feel like I embody that 110%. It's also a language. It's a language that no matter what country I go to, 
if I don't speak their native tongue, but I speak hip hop, I'm able to relate with them because they can understand me. The music, the dance, everything, everything that comes along with it. House is a feeling, it's spiritual, it's uplifting. It moves my soul, it moves me, it puts me on a different plane, it puts me in a different zone. Like most of the time, house for me was a place that I can go and like get away from my everyday problems. It was like my own little cocoon that I can go in and deal with the music and just be at one with myself and kind of reflect. Form of meditation while you're on the floor with a thousand other people who are kind of doing the same thing, you know. I just want them to enjoy themselves. If they were trained dancers, then they have one view of dance. Your leg has to be at a certain degree. Your arm has to be at a certain point. You have to hold, hold your stomach in. You have to breathe a certain way, as opposed to just dancing, because this is a dance from the club. There's no one that has a spotlight on you trying to focus in on everything you're doing. Basically, everyone is together trying to enjoy each other's en energy. That's really the most important thing about my class and what I want to share. So if they don't get something, it's no big deal. We'll move on to something else. Maybe you'll get that. And if you don't get that, then let's try something else. That's what it's all about because that's how it was for me in the club. If I didn't understand something, I moved on to something else that I did understand. And then I tried to go back later to what I didn't understand. And then it was a bit it was a, a bit more clear. That's what this experience is about. It's about enjoying yourself because I feel that nowadays a lot of people don't enjoy themselves. We have a lot of competitions around the world. So a lot of people are fighting one another and they're not taking a chance to learn how to vibe with one another and feed off one another's energy. It's all about me trying to shut your energy down and you're trying to shut my energy down. You want to show me. It's like two people talking at the same time as opposed to me talking or you talking, me listening, vice versa. So where we actually have a conversation and we elevate, we stay stagnant when we, when we don't do that. And that's kind of like the state we're in right now. Uh, hip hop is street, like it's under the street dance umbrella. House, whacking, punking, those are club dances. Those were dances done primarily in the club. Hip hop jams were out in the park. We did that on the street. If it was your birthday, your anniversary, baby shower, someone just got married, they threw a jam, they had a party outside. That's how hip hop was introduced in the community. But it wasn't called hip hop then, it was called a jam. The jam, they played music and people came to dance. Then as time went on in the jam, they introduced the house music, but that came later, much, much later. Those jams were done in the club where you heard the, that particular music. You had to go to the garage, and people from the garage told you about their experience. It was a club that opened from 12 and closed at 12. Hip hop is hip hop, and hip hop encompasses breaking, which is the first dance of hip hop, graffiti, DJing, MCing, knowledge yourself, respect, peace, love, unity, having fun, hip hop. House is under a different umbrella. It's under the club umbrella. Now, what organizers do, they'll throw it underneath the umbrella and say it's a part of the hip hop culture because they have contests. And because they have contests, you have a hip hop category, popping, locking, and house. I'm one of the people that help kind of mesh the two together to, and then champion it for all these years, pushing it all over the world. I think we really honestly and truly understand it best because we were there, we saw, we were in the hip hop club where they played a little house. We were there when there was just house club and you went after the hip hop club closed. It was after hours. The two don't, they didn't. We married the two together because we were from both worlds. My mom is my biggest inspiration, first and foremost. Buddha Stretch and Link and Ejo Wilson were mop top before we became, before they became Elite Force and before, and before Myself, a brother named Seku, and Justice started Dance Fusion. Before that, you know, we just went to party. We weren't thinking about sharing this with anyone. So we all inspired one another just for the simple fact that we loved what we were doing and people were interested in it. So I guess it was the people themselves, people in Japan, who were, they were the first ones to bring us abroad to 
to actually share and want to learn it. Seeing how, how deeply it moved them, that is what inspired us and made us want to continue on. Seeing how they kind of like kept a history of all the things they've learned up until our point. They were very strong in locking and breaking. They were like kind of like an encyclopedia. If you wanted to look back to find out something, you can just go there, there's footage. They were very good at documenting things that they learned. That was inspiring as well. Wow, these people actually keep records of people that they learned, like Tony Gogo, Don Campbell, when Poppin' Pete and Skeeter Rabbit came. They have all of that footage. These things for me are very important. It helped push me to say to myself, and also meeting these people, Wiggles, Ken Swift, Fable, Crazy Legs, they also inspired me. Working with Pete, working with Sugar Pop inspired me. God bless, God bless the dead, Greg Campbell Lock Jr. Meeting them, seeing them, hearing their stories, Boogaloo Sam. This is the reason why I guess we continue. Hearing Pop, Pop Todd's story inspiring. This year when I, I brought all three of my kids with me to uh, Montreal and they got to see me work outside of the country, got to see how big this, this scene has become. In the beginning, no one really cared about house, hip-hop. They didn't really care about this culture. And within the last 10 years or so, it's actually grown tremendously, especially here in the States. It was an eye-opener for them and it gave them a bigger respect for what I do. It was an honor to share with them. And sometimes my mom, she also accompanied me as well. Seeing her, seeing the smile on her face, seeing how proud she is of me, that makes me really happy. No, I, I would just say that my overall goal is just to keep this alive. For as long as I'm alive, I just want to keep it alive. I want to keep the spirit alive, share the love of the dance with the people. Let them know that they have to, in turn, pass on the love. They have to pay it forward and pass on the love to someone else. This dance is not about hate. Hate has no place in this realm.